Art as welcome back to another video. This video is about uh, custom dismantling. I can just show you uh, how it looks and then I'm gonna explain the code of it. Alright, so this reflex. Yep. Okay. Now let's get to the explaining part. But first of all, uh, if you want to modify the timer animation, I highly suggest uh, getting Moon animated because I don't think there's a different way. Uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, there isn't really another way if you don't have Moon anim animator to so change the cutscene. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. But it's only for the uh, if you want to change the actual cutscene. Okay. Let me actually just start, show you how you would do that with Moon Animator. So, from Moon Animator and open it, then you're gonna see this file. And you can just open this. And here, you just then need to add a new camera, it's already here. Then you need to click on reference and then uh, go onto the enemy, uh, onto the player screen looking part and click set selection as reference. And then, okay, I've already done that. And then you could just export that. Oh, and you will see there's a new folder uh, under camera. In this folder, you would just drag that into the tool and change its same to cam animation. That's if you want to change uh, this uh, scene. Also make sure that in your animation you have four animation events. One is called bump. It's for playing that bump sound. The other one is called zoom in. It's for playing that like rouge sound here. Then the third one is called hit. Here we are simply just damaging the enemy and doing the effects. And then also an end key frame. If you don't know, uh, if you don't have new animator and don't know how to add uh, animation events uh, from the normal animation editor, I'm just gonna show you how that's done. You simply go into animation. Go on to the spot where you want. Oh, uh, we have one here. Let's just uh, go here. Then you can. Uh, uh, let's go uh, yeah, Just go to here. Then you can click add uh, right click. Add animation event here. And then you can just also call this zoom in. And now you have an animation event here. That's how you add animation events with the normal animation editor. If you don't want to pay for Moon Animator. Okay. Now let's get to the action. It's And um, in Lightning, everything is normal except the blur effect. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even know if you use it. I think you use it. I don't know actually. <laughs> uh, but we see. Uh, then in replicate search we have an animations folder with the enemy and the player animation and then we have the effects uh, I want to say this is not my effect, I didn't have it um, here you can also change those two sounds All right. uh, then we have one event in the events folder and one module for the cutscene. Okay. Uh, and so storage is nothing. This is just an animator. Uh, then we have uh, in strategy we have an um, effects screen QI, which is just uh, those two bars that you maybe saw. Just those. It's for the cinematic effect. <laughs> um. Then we 
uh, then you can also change the other songs in the sound service as fixed and this matter. And change the bump sound, green light trap sound, and this wind whoosh whatever sound. Okay. And then in the tool we have a client script and a self script and an event. Let's just first look at the client so it's real simple. We are just hiring an event to the server. We are choose this server um, script uh, with the event. And then on the server script, we will first of all see, of the, see all of this. And. Um, no, um, okay. And um, yeah, here you can change the cooldown. This is the cooldown. Uh, you can change the damage and you can change the range. Uh, the range is simply just uh, if I'm standing here and the range is 15, this uh, 15 stops, uh, this dummy will not be in the range because he is far further away than 15 stops. But this any uh, dummy is in the range. So we will choose this dummy to attack. But if we are here and both of them are in uh, the 15 um, stats range, we will just choose one of them randomly. Okay. Uh, first of all, we just check if uh, the debounce is not true. If it would be true, we just uh, Put the tool back into the player's backpack. Here, we just search for all um, enemies or players because every character must have a humanoid in it to, well, be, um, yeah, to be a character. So we just search in workspace for a model that has a humanoid in it. And isn't our character. If that's true, we will uh, get their human group part and human head, and the distance between their human group part and our human group part. Um, and if the distance is smaller or is the same as the range, and the enemy is actually even alive. We will choose him as the target. Then we set the demons to true. Uh, set the walk speed of our humanoid and the enemy humanoid to zero. And also auto rotate to fault, so we can't rotate anymore with shift lock. And here we just position uh, our enemy uh, two times because. Sometimes uh, from the first position it's just weird, so we make sure to position him a, s a second time again, just so uh, just so we know that he's really positioned correctly. Uh, I'm gonna just show you what I exactly mean. Um, so you see, the enemy is currently right here, but if I do this. We position him and we're gonna position him around here. Yep. Just so the animation plays yeah, perfectly. It's basically like here. If I'm standing here, we are just gonna teleport the enemy, yeah, basically like there. That's 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 basically that. We just play both animations. Here we fire an event to the client um, of both uh, characters, of both players. Um, it's a camera event, it's for playing the um, cutscene. But uh, first of all, I'm gonna say that we also check if the character even is a player because. If we try to um, 
do that for a dummy the cutscene i think that it's just error so we are checking if it's a player and then only we play the cutscene so check if uh, we can get the player from the character and if it's so yeah we fire an event to uh, the client with all of that this is the folder this is just the action here and yeah the character and the player then let's look what the camera action is so go into your vf example when you see here uh, see here if action is camera then we will also add the folder because those three dots are really good because you can just yeah add some uh, stuff up here with not having it for i don't know i can't really explain it uh, but yeah and um, <clears throat> first of all we just then uh, position those two cinematic bars and we just position them a bit further down then we set our backpack to false so we can't use any tools and then we will uh, call a function from the cutscene module and give it the folder and our character and let's look into the cutscene module this is basically what function we are calling and yeah i'm gonna link the video down below from where i got this uh, cutscene module because uh, yeah it's not mine and um, yeah um, then let's continue here then we will again listen or not again but we will listen for the keyframe uh, an event from the animation of the player and if you just set the player at set the tool to the backpack again yeah just why not i guess then we will check here if the keyframe is the bump so if the keyframe is called bump we will just play the bump sound if the keyframe is called zoom in we will just play the wind sound if the keyframe is hit we will uh, play the finger clap sound we will damage the enemy and we will fire another event to the client to all clients and this is the dismantle uh, action and this is basically just for uh, emitting the particles here from that and playing those two sounds that's basically it and then if the keyframe is end, we are uh, gonna fire the client from uh, our client and if the enemy is in player, we are also gonna fire his client with cam end. And this is basically just for putting those uh, cinematic bars up again. We don't uh, enable our player's backpack uh, and here again, because we already do it in the cutscene module. Uh, yeah, then we also just set every uh, the box with the jump height and the auto rotate back to its normal values, and then we will just uh, wait until the cooldown is finished, and then we set the debug supports again so we can use the skill again. Yeah, this was basically everything. Thanks for watching. And let's say. Welcome. Won't you come inside? Oh, I fear the passing year did not deserve you by some.